So we all know historically Dino has been one of my favorite decks to show off here on the channel and I really wanted to bring you guys an updated Dino deck profile for the brand new May 2024 format. The most recent ban list brought back Colossus and I wanted to show you guys how we can abuse Colossus in Dino. Now it's not the Thunder Dino build, it's still pure Dino but there's still a way to use Colossus and it's very very effective. Now with that being said I want to show you guys a combo first and then we're going to get right into the deck profile and I'm going to be showing you guys why this deck is so powerful powerful, why I can do so many different things going first, and especially without having to play through Baron and whatnot, this deck going second is very powerful as well. So with that, let's get right into today's video. Now of course I'm going to be only showing you guys one combo in today's video but keep in mind this exact same combo can be done with a multitude of different two cards. So in this case I'm going to be showing you guys Ovi plus Baby. This can also be done with Misk plus Baby, Misk plus Fossil Dig, Fossil Dig plus Ovi, Ovi plus Misk. There are so many different ways to do this exact combo which is really really cool. It's just very consistent this deck and I, that's why I really appreciate about this deck. But I just want to show you guys Ovi plus Baby most simplistic way and no matter how old this deck gets it seems like Ovi Baby is just the best thing in the game it's so so powerful so let's get right into it though we're going to start off with normal summoning our ov raptor activating its effect of course to search the most powerful card in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Miscellaneousaurus. Absolutely insane card. We're going to be adding it to our hand. And then we're going to also be using the miscellaneous effect right away so that we are unaffected. So our dino monsters are good to go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to activate our Miscellaneousaurus in our graveyard to banish the one. And then we're going to be able to summon an Archosaur. All right. And I'm going to give you guys some information here. Okay. This is kind of like me getting ahead of myself, but these zones kind of do matter. And I'm going to show you guys why the zone placement does matter in a little bit. But uh, for now, let's keep going. So we're going to use our Archosaur effect here, of course. Pop the baby Ceratosaurus. We're gonna be able to search a double evolution pill, and the baby, of course, is gonna be able to summon another baby from deck. All right. So at this point, the zones don't matter as much. It's when you start link summoning that it matters, and I'll show you guys that. But for now, we're gonna use our Oviraptor effect, of course, over here. We're gonna pop the baby Ceratosaurus so that we can summon the other baby Ceratosaurus onto our side of the field. This is gonna trigger now to summon a giant Rex. All right. So we are going to summon a giant Rex over here from our baby Ceratosaurus that was just popped. So what we're going to do now is we need an Archosaur in the graveyard. And unfortunately, then Karibo is gone, which kind of hurts some of our combos. But we still have another card that we can make that's not a Dino Monster. The reason we need a non-Dino Monster, by the way, is for Double Evolution Pill, of course. So we're going to go Anima over here, right? It's not as powerful as Karibo, but Anima is still sufficient. It still works. We're going to use our Anima and our Giant Rex over here because we need to get the Anima into the graveyard to make a Cross Sheep. All right, so let's make a Cross Sheep right over here. And then what we're going to be able to do is right off the bat, we're going to go Double Evolution pill and then we're going to banish our giant rex as well as our anima over here to summon our ultimate conductor tyranno and let's just summon the tyranno over here to the corner all right we need to keep these zones here as free as possible so then what we're going to do is we are going to activate the effect of giant rex to summon itself to our side of the field over here, right? So now from here, there's a few things you can do. Traditionally, you'll just make like a Dolka or something like that. And then you might have here, instead of a cross sheep, you can make an SP, right? But I want to show you guys how you can take this a little bit further because what you can do is you can use your OV and your giant Rex to make a flame Banshee, all right? So we're going to make a flame Banshee over here. And this is very reminiscent of when you used to make Gallant Granite so that you can search the Nemesis, uh, the rock one. Uh, I can't remember the rock one's name, but you search that and with the scrap package and then you make Naturia B. This is a little bit reminiscent of that, but I think it's actually a little bit stronger. So we're going to use the Flame Banshee effect to detach the Giant Rex, and then we're going to be able to search our Nemesis Flag to our hand. And then this is going to be able to put back our Miscellaneousaurus, which is, is really cool, honestly. You're going to be putting the Miscellaneous back, and then we're going to summon the Flag over here. And then we're going to use the Flag effect over here, of course, so that we can search our Nemesis Corridor. Now, this is how the deck searches a way to make Colossus, which is absolutely insane, right? So from here, you guys can actually do a couple different things, and... And I'll explain it to you now but what we can do in theory is you can make just straight up an SP Little Knight over here which is really powerful you can also go Appaloosa with one two and three so you have three disruptions with Appaloosa you can also go IP Mascarena so you have IP plus your cross sheep IP plus cross sheep of course is going to be able to extend you a little bit further but we're gonna do things a little bit differently over here right so I'm gonna be doing here is we're gonna be activating our Colossus over here putting back the anima that's banished and this is why this combo is so good because it banishes two cards for you we're gonna summon our corridor over here now before we do anything with the corridor actually first thing we're going to do is we are going to make an sp little knight using the flag as well as the banshee over here we just want to free up a zone all right so let's keep that here then what we're going to do is we're going to make the corridor into our 
Thunder Dragon Colossus. And now that we've summoned a fusion monster in the cross sheep zone, we're actually going to be able to activate the cross sheep. And then what we're going to be able to do is summon back. Doesn't really matter what we summon back at this point. Could just be a giant Rex. Honestly, it's, it's not that important. And then what you can do from now is honestly, first thing you can do is just pass because you have the ultimate conductor tyranno which pops the baby cerasaurus which is going to be follow up for you that's not as important we're going to actually extend a little bit further and make an appaloosa using the cross sheep over here the giant rex as well as the baby cerasaurus and this is what we're going to be ending on so a conductor tyranno to book of moon your opponent's entire field so book of eclipse essentially we have a colossus so our opponent can't search any cards we have an sp little knight as a banish and as a disruption and then we have an appaloosa with three negates so one two three four disruptions five disruptions, plus a Thunder Dragon Colossus, and this is all off of just an Ovi Raptor and a Baby Cerasaurus, and like I said, it can be done with Misk and Baby, Misk and Fossil Dig, it can be done Fossil Dig, Ovi, Fossil Dig, Baby, so many different ways to do it, which is absolutely insane, and this, this combo over here just looks already kind of crazy right another thing that you guys could have done as well is instead of making an sp you guys could have made an ip over here and then when you have the giant rex over here is you can go ip plus giant rex into sp on your opponent's turn so that this way you're getting a little bit more of a disruption you guys can do that as well there are so many different ways you can do it but essentially this is what your board is going to look like with multiple disruptions so let's get into the deck profile right over here and i want to show you guys how consistent this deck is and explain some of my card choices for the dino stuff it is pretty standard though i hate saying the word standard but really it is what it is right because this is stuff that you would not not play in dino you would you would play in dino not not is just you would yeah so let's get things going we have three ov raptor over here of course it's the best normal summon in your deck you're never going to not play three ov raptors three ov raptor three baby cerasaurus now baby cerasaurus of course is key to all of your combos as well because if you're not opening ov you want to be opening baby baby plus a miscellaneous works baby plus fossil dig works you have baby plus uh, the xeno package over here which works as well so that's why you need to be maxing out on baby and then we're of course playing the one petite pteranodon it's still a very powerful card to be playing it doesn't come up in all of your combos but if you don't see a baby seeing petite Tyranodon can be really powerful for you as well. Two Archosaur here, of course, because uh, we want to be pulling one always from our deck with Miscellaneousaurus. So two Archosaur, one Misk, of course. I wish this card came back to more than one. If this came back to more than one, this deck would be insane. This deck would be so crazy. But one Misk, of course, one Giant Rex, and two of the Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. Now, there's a couple things that I want to talk about before I continue on with this deck profile, right? One of the things that I want to talk about is why we're not playing the new, uh, I forget the, the name of the Dino Monster, but it's the one that searches the polymerization that kind of acts like a Giant Rex. I'm actually not playing that because I don't want to play Poly and I don't want to go through those lines the reason is it's just adding bricks to your deck giant rex is already a brick and so is that monster that kind of is like giant rex but searches polymerization so i don't like that package because it's like one you're already playing that brick and then you're gonna be playing polymerization which is another brick and then on top of that you have to be playing lost world which i'm not playing and the reason i'm not playing lost world is because i'm gonna be honest guys it's not that good lost world is not a great card to be honest with you with misc and a lot of your combos you're gonna be going off anyway lost world doesn't actually help you combo off on its own anyway so it's it's not in my opinion it's not it's really not the greatest right so that's why i'm not playing lost world i'm not playing that polymerization package i really wanted to keep the package as tight as possible and the reason i'm keeping it tight is because you're able to play a lot more non-engine and non-engine is a lot more important in today's format than just squeezing in more and more and more engine right because you need to be able to play when you're going second this deck of course wants to go first dino historically can always go second but this deck wants to go first so you want to be able to play cards where if I don't go first, I can still win the games, right? And that's why I really want to keep it very, very tight. So again, two Tyranno, one Giant Rex is all I'm playing. Playing two Double Evolution Pill, of course three fossil dig for consistency one of the xeno meteoris as well as one of the fire opal head this could also be frostosaurus it doesn't really matter the reason i'm playing fire opal head funny enough is i, I don't want to play into rivalry this actually plays around rivalry which i know is not a thing in every deck right now and it's only at one but it's just one of those situations you can play around it and it doesn't really cost you anything so we're playing the one opal head and the one xeno three ground xeno of course ground xeno absolutely insane card another fossil dig essentially for your deck but it pops your baby it gets a lot of your combo started and if you start with ground xeno and baby essentially what you can do is you actually end on the combo plus a Lars, right? And a Lars is absolutely insane to end on as well. So that's why uh, we're playing the Xenio Meteoris and the Opal Head and the whole Ground Xeno package. Then of course, we're playing the One Flag and the One Corridor. Now, if you're not playing a Colossus build, which I personally like playing because I just think it's really cool. But if you're not playing that build, you guys can cut these two cards and then you can make room for stuff like, you know, the, the Polymerization and that package. However, I will say one thing. If you open Flag or you open Corridor, 
These are not bricks for you. All it means is that you don't now have to go into your Banshee and start going these weird combo lines like I just showed you guys earlier. You guys can just use these right away and then use your monsters for like a Dolka. So imagine, imagine the last combo, I had a Corridor already in hand, then I don't need to make Flame Banshee to get to the Corridor. I need, I don't need to do all that stuff. What I can do is I can just slap a Dolka onto my side of the field and then make a Corridor, Corridor into Colossus, and now I have two more disruptions with a Dolka. Or I could have slapped a Logia onto my side of the field as well, right? So that's why I think these cards are better than the whole polymerization package like i said or the whole lost world package because these cards in hand are actually beneficial to you they actually do something for you now you don't want to max out on them because these are not actually going to get your combo started this is just kind of a thunder dragon colossus line however if you do see one or the other then you guys can still play with it right so that's why i really like these two cards one called by the grave of course then for the non-engine because we're playing a lot of non-engine you guys are going to see we're not playing prosperity the reason we're not playing prosperity is because i feel like this deck is already so consistent over here we have uh what is it like like 20 35 cards that are just consistency and engine so i didn't want to play prost even though i get prost is really really powerful but three fossil dig three ground zeno three ov three baby you guys are going to see some sort of combination of the two and if you see any two com combo together essentially like if you see baby fossil dig baby zeno petite zeno baby ov ov fossil dig ov zeno ov misc even Arco Misk, Arco Baby, like these are all two card combos. So as long as you see any two cards, you're pretty much going to be able to combo anyways, right? So that's why uh, I'm not playing Prosperity. But what we are playing is three Ash Blossom, three Nibiru, three Imperm. I'm playing three Droplet because I think Droplet is absolutely insane right now. Imagine going second, I activate a Fossil Dig, activate Droplet, let's say, and then send the Fossil Dig that's on my side of the field to, to negate a card. Like it's still very, very powerful. So that's why I really like these kind of cards like Droplet. Droplet works really well when you're playing these spell cards because you can activate the spell cards then activate droplet in response to the spell card and then what you can do with that then means you can now negate a card that your opponent controls but then also continue to play because you're not really losing a card right so three droplet and then we're playing two talents i think talents is really powerful because we are in a hand trap format and i think going first if your opponent does have some sort of hand trap for you you can talents take away another card from their hand and you're going to be put at such a strong advantage so that's why i really like talents now something that i'm not playing is pangotops i know pangotops is something that you can summon off of petite pteranodon as well so that is an option for you guys and if you guys wanted to play pancreatops instead of the talents you guys can do that as well i just personally think talents is a lot more anti-meta if that makes sense it's a lot more meta specific pancreatops is a really good card that i would 100 consider siding it but maybe not in the main deck right now all right this can also be changed i was really back and forth between the viru and baylor and mourner those are three really good cards uh ogre as well is really really good so you guys can play ogre here as said so the viru is just one of those things that i was kind of like it's in and out of formats. In this format, I think it's really good, so that's why I'm playing it. But you guys can swap it out, of course, for an Ogre or for a Veiler or for a Mourner if you guys want to as well, right? So that's it for the main deck. 40 cards on the dot for the main deck. Moving on to the extra deck, of course, we're playing the one Colossus. We're playing the one Banshee here. These two essentially work really well with each other. Banshee being able to search flag is absolutely insane, by the way. We have the one Dugaris, one Dolka, one Lagia, one Lars. These are all really powerful cards to end on, which is really, really nice. One Anima, of course, because we lost our Link Karibo. One Crush because you guys saw how powerful it is with the combo one pentastag to help you otk ip mascarina sp little knight we have a nightmare unicorn unicorn is a really cool card because you can make unicorn with ip and then go into access code over here which is really nice however you guys can actually cut the unicorn for something else if you wanted to i don't find myself going into it that often unless i know after a unicorn exactly this moment i'm going to be able to go into access code for game right so that's kind of why unicorn i would say is kind of like a flex ball but i still really like it. One Appaloosa, of course, very, very powerful card. One Axis Code Talker to help you push for game. Not that this deck has a problem pushing for game anyways, but Axis Code does just make that so much easier for you. And then one Typhon as well. Typhon is really good when you're going second and you just don't see what you want to see. Stop a Typhon. But again, this is another flex spot. I would say this and Unicorn over here, these two cards are two flex spots for you guys that you can play another rank four monster potentially. If you guys want to be able to play Dweller, uh, if you guys want to play something like Baguska, that's another option for you. If you want to play different link monsters, you guys can do that as well. Maybe Nightmare Phoenix if you guys want to get rid of back row. That's another option for you. So these two cards over here, two flex spots for you, essentially whatever toolbox cards you want to play instead. And then I'm not showing you guys a side deck, but a side deck is really going to be focused around today's meta, right? So if you're not playing Pancatops in the main deck, you can play it in the side deck. You can play stuff like Harpy's Feather Duster, Lightning Storms, uh, Cosmic Cyclones, potentially for more back row matchup. You guys can play D Barrier. D Barrier is really powerful right now into Tempai and Branded and all those kind of decks. So D Barrier for going first is really nice. So many different options for you guys can play in the side deck, but I just really wanted to show you guys why Dino is still a insanely 
consistent deck and it has all of these insane combos. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Dino for the May 2024 format. This deck is so consistent and makes these insanely powerful boards, ending on stuff like Colossus, Appalosa. You have your Ultimate Conductor, Tyranno, and it's just any two cards in the deck essentially get you to combo, which is absolutely insane. Now, if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload seven days a week here on the channel. You guys get five shorts a week and then two videos just like this one, combo videos, deck profiles, you guys are gonna get product openings all that good stuff you'll find it right here on the channel so make sure you subscribe to stay tuned into all of that i appreciate every single one of you thank you guys all for watching and with that spanko signing out peace